during the fetal life between four and six weeks of gestation. Primordial germ cells will migrate from the yolk sac around the hind gut toward the genital ridge. In females, the genital ridge will differentiate to form the ovary, and germ cells are called oogonium. The oogonium is a diploid cell. I mean it contains 46 chromosomes. At 6 to 8 week gestation, the oogonia will start to multiply by mitosis, forming more and more oogonia. Reaching up to 7 million oogonia by around 20 week gestation. After 20 week, no more oogonia will be formed. This is the maximal oogonal content. Instead, they will start to decline. Now the oogonium will start the first meiotic division, and its name will change into primary oocyte. As you know, meiosis reduces the number of chromosomes to produce a haploid cell. Meiosis consists of two phases. The primary oocyte will start the first meiotic division, but will not complete it and will remain arrested at the diplotene stage of the first meiosis until the time of ovulation. Immediately just before ovulation, it will resume meiosis 1 to form secondary oocytes containing 23 chromosomes and the first polar body containing 23 chromosomes. The secondary oocyte will start meiosis 2, and again, it will be arrested until the time of fertilization. After fertilization, it will resume meiosis 2 to form mature oocyte containing 23 chromosomes and a second polar body. A single layer of spindle-shaped granulosa cells will surround the primary oocyte, forming a primordial follicle. The primary oocyte will slightly enlarge, and the spindle-shaped granulosa cells will become cuboidal in shape. This is called the primary follicle. Every period of time, a group of primordial follicles will start to grow, up to a certain level. But without FSH, they cannot complete their growth and eventually will undergo atresia in a process known as apoptosis. Apoptosis is a Greek word and means falling off, like leaves falling off a tree. Follicular growth and apoptosis will continue throughout fetal life so that only about 1 to 2 million follicles will remain inside the ovaries at the time of birth. During childhood, the same process will continue, and up to 400 to 500,000 follicles will remain inside ovaries at the time of puberty. After puberty, a dramatic change will happen because there is a new and very important player, I mean FSH. The anterior pituitary secretes FSH and LH. The group of follicles that respond to FSH at the beginning of a cycle will avoid apoptosis and will continue to grow. Now, the primary follicle will continue to grow and form preantral follicle. As you see, the preantral follicle is formed of multiple layers of granulosa cells surrounded by an outer membrane known as basement membrane. Granulosa cells will also produce a glycoprotein membrane around the oocyte known as zona pellucida. Another type of cells will arrange around the basement membrane, known as theca cells. 
The integration between theca cell and the granulosa cell is very important in the production of estrogen. Under the effect of LH, theca cells will convert cholesterol into androgens. This androgen will pass to granulosa cells, which under the effect of FSH will convert androgen into estrogen. Under the effect of FSH, granulosa cells will produce increasing amount of follicular fluids, which accumulate in the intercellular spaces, forming small cavities of fluid collections. These fluid cavities are called Kohl-Exner bodies. Eventually, these cavities coalesce together to form a single large cavity known as antrum. The group of granulosa cells surrounding the oocytes are known as comulus. This follicle is now called antral follicle. Theca cells will develop more. I mean it become more vascular and contain more lipid containing cytoplasmic vacuoles and the now called theca interna. The surrounding stroma is compressed and is called theca externa. The follicle with the largest number of FSH receptors will continue to grow as a dominant follicle, while other follicles will undergo atresia. At the middle of the cycle, LH will sharply increase. This will result in ovulation. Just immediately before ovulation, the primary oocyte will complete the first meiotic division to form the haploid secondary oocyte and the first polar body. Ovulation means rupture of the dominant follicle and the escape of the oocyte with the surrounding cumulus from the ovary into the fallopian tube. After ovulation, the follicle will change into corpus luteum, where granulosa cells enlarge and fill the cavity and produce estrogen and progesterone. If pregnancy happens, corpus luteum will continue to support the new conception until the placenta develops and takes this function. On the other hand, if pregnancy did not occur, the corpus luteum will degenerate. The process of follicular growth, ovulation, and atresia will continue for about 35 to 40 years until the follicular pool will finish. At that time, ovulation will stop and the menopause will start.